Hi, and welcome to the Neoprene Playmat. I'm your host, Matt Piak, and uh, this is Tastes on Tuesday. So typically in this segment, what we cover is uh, what my tastes are in games, how I find something I like, and how I discard the things I don't like. Um, and so I thought, after thinking about it, it might be good to take a look at my shelf of shame. All the games that haven't gotten played for whatever reason, some of them are just new purchases and I just haven't had times or the groups to play them, and others have been sitting on the shelf for years. So, let's take a look. Alright, to begin with, The Trial of the Temples. So, this is one that I, I got probably in early June. Um, Deepwater Games was doing a huge sale, it might have been late May, where they were bundling a bunch of games together. Um, claim... Claim 2, Fantastic Factories, Trial of the Temples, Realm of the Sands, Mystery of the Temples. I think I got all those for like 45 bucks. So um, Trial of the Temples wasn't anything in particular I was looking at. Um, really, I just wanted Fantastic Factories and both claim games. Uh, and so, but the bundle was so affordable, I just decided, hey, let's, let's get it. Um, I've played through Mystery of the Temples and didn't love that one a ton, but Realm of the Sand I thought was a, a nice game that looked like could put, has some potential for solo play. Um, it kind of feels like a Splendor Weight game with Polyominoes, um, and so that one is fairly interesting. Um, this one, though, looks a little bit more like Mystery of the Temples, which um, it's got this circle here, and you're going to be moving around this rondelle, um, collecting crystals and putting them out on your play mat. Um, I haven't really looked into getting this one to the table. I haven't read the instructions yet. It's just kind of sitting there, but it's also kind of staring me down saying, hey, I'm a game on your shelf. You haven't played yet. So um, this is definitely one that I would like to get to the table, but at the same time, it's not maybe my highest priority um, based on how I received it. Another game currently sitting on my shelf of shame is Zombicide Invader. Um, if you watch Spend My Money Mondays, you'll know that this was a... I, I received this in a trade earlier in September, so there are plans to get it to the table. Um, I have somebody I play online with. Uh, I kind of have this whole setup through, through Discord and multiple cameras so we can play physical games um, online, and we've been going through Zombicide Green Horde and the Friends and Foes expansion, and so... We're going to take a look at Zombicide Invader um, next. The thing that really intrigued me about this one, besides these you know, awesome sculpts and whatnot, um, is that some of the heroes in this game actually don't, from my understanding, don't attack, whereas others do. And so there's kind of like utility characters and more like soldiers. and You can put turrets out and things, and they're alien zombies. So... Looked really interesting, looked like something I wanted to kind of sink my teeth into, and given that um, I've been playing through Green Horde with, with a buddy online, I figured this would be an easy one to just add to, kind of add more campaigns, because we're almost done with all of the friends and foe, and we finished the original uh, Green Horde box, so um, it's not Black Plague, but it should be something different and, and interesting, and so I'm excited to get this one here to the table soon. Another game on my shelf of shame has actually, unfortunately, been there for too long. Um, I think it's been been sitting there for two years now, and this is The Others, Seven Sins. So, typically, when I play games, um, I, I really like the cooperative um, aspects of a lot of games, and... I'm okay with a game that's all competitive, but this is a one versus many game. And being that I'm going to be the one teaching it inevitably because I'm the one that owns it, I'm probably going to be playing the one and I'll be against the many. Um, and for whatever reason, that hasn't appealed to me. Um, there's a The villain gets to play as a large sin. And then, so you'll see like this is Sloth. Um, this is the avatar of Sloth, and here's kind of the villains he puts out. Um, here's another one. It's Pride, um, this big, scary-looking dude, and he puts out these crazy things. And so um, as the one, you're playing this Sin, and the rest of the group is 
are playing heroes and you're out on this um out on this map and essentially they're kind of like anti-heroes though the 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 cooperative group they're kind of all these uh monsters and tainted individuals that are kind of coming together to deal with something that's worse than them this deadly sin and so the theme seems super interesting to me um but yeah at the end of the day i think i haven't gotten it out to play because i haven't really wanted to be the sin i've wanted to be one of the people in the group i want to be like the werewolf there's a werewolf with like a big sword and stuff um i think he's right here i mean look at that that guy's awesome um and here he is when he's a human he can go back and forth between the two and so uh this one has been been just sitting on my shelf because of that and frankly i i can't really think of any other one verse many game that um, I've gotten to the table. It just seems like this genre, for whatever reason, sits, no matter how intrigued I am with them. So this, the others, has been been on my shelf for probably about two years now, and that needs to change. Another one that's recently been added to my shelf and is currently sitting on the shelf of shame is Diamonds, which is um, a trick-taking game where every suit has a different power, um, you're playing cards out much like the game Euchre or Hearts or Spades, um, Fox in the Forest, Gorus Maximus. Um, I could go on for days listing trick-taking games, but, um, in Diamonds, you have, you have a vault that sits out and you are trying to collect diamonds to go into that vault. Um, those are hidden from other players, but then you'll be playing different suits to do different things, um, to disrupt people's collection of of diamonds or to um, disrupt play i haven't gotten this one to the table i've heard great things about it um, i did get a first edition copy there is a second edition one out now by they're both by stronghold games um, so i don't know what the second edition really changed about it but i have a first edition copy and i'll be excited to get that to the table when i can get four people to the table uh, covid is made that rough um, as far as getting gatherings together. I've done a lot of two-player gaming lately, um, so hopefully in the future I'll be able to get this one to the table. Which brings us to another group game that's been on my shelf for a uh, couple weeks now, probably the same length as Diamonds. Um, it, that's a Bluxen, or the English copy is called Linko, with an exclamation point. It looks like this right here. Um, put out by Ravensburger. This is a um, Kiesling and Kramer game, which, or Kramer and Kiesling, however you want to put it. Um, I really like a lot of their games. They're the people that brought you Azul. Um, and in this one, you are playing um, cards out of your hand with really no, no order to them. You can play as many of the same number of card um, as you want down. And depending on kind of how it all lays out, you can end up picking up cards from other people, forcing them to draw from this middle and pick up cards. You score points based on how many cards you have in front of you. So being able to play big pairs is super helpful. Um, but you don't want to have too many cards in your hand when the game ends after one player essentially goes out. Um, looks really interesting. Looks like a quick card game. It looks like one of those where... Um, it's, it's all the mechanics look very easy, but then putting it all together for whatever reason can be somewhat confusing. Um, I think of a game like Arboretum, like the first time you play Arboretum, this understanding the scoring for whatever reason is so difficult. And then you see it happen and you go, oh, okay, I get this and let's play again. And you hop right back into it. So, um, I'm excited to get my copy of a Blocks into the table and, um, this is another one that I'll probably need to uh, to get a, a few people to together to to play. So I don't know how quickly this will happen in my future, but we'll, we will see. All right, on to the next game here. We have Tragedy Looper. This has been on my shelf unplayed. This one's pretty embarrassing. Probably for five or six years, and I haven't played it. I got it around when it first came out. The artwork intrigued me. The theme is super fascinating. You are like chrono agents, um, you time travelers essentially. And there's one player that's playing the mastermind and everybody else is playing these different uh, time traveling uh, kids. And 
I, they look like kids. I think they're kids. Anyway, they they will flash back in time, and uh, they try and prevent a tragedy um, by moving different people around in the city. Um, and they're trying to make observations. But when they're in the city, they can't communicate. They're too far away from each other. Um, and the game master, the, the, the villain, uh, if you will, um, will... Uh, essentially let them know when tragedy strikes, which means they have to go back to the curtained room. When they go to the curtained room, they're allowed to talk and about what they've kind of seen and kind of deduce what's going on. And then because they can time travel, they go back and they try again. Throughout the game, you're going in. Um, here's some of the characters from the game. You're going into these different rooms, you're moving people around, and you're trying to figure out how to prevent the tragedy, um, how to make sure that, you know, somebody doesn't die. And But sometimes when you do that, you end up creating other tragedies. And so it's a, it's a puzzle you're all trying to solve together um, while the mastermind is trying to lead you astray. Um, this, just like the others, is a one versus many game, which is probably another reason I haven't gotten it to the table. The theme looks super intriguing. The artwork, I actually, I enjoy anime style artwork. I certainly don't want all of my games anime, but I do have quite a few in my collection and I do enjoy that, that style of, of artwork. So this is one that has been on my mind for a while. Um, and I really need to get it to the table at some point soon. So, um, that's Tragedy Looper. And then the last one, this one has um, also been on my shelf for about probably the same amount of time as Tragedy Looper, maybe a little bit less, more like four, four and a half years. Um, in time and space, you are essentially moving around in space, grabbing um, different resources and putting them on your ship. And the, the kind of the gimmick of this game is that to do actions, you have to wait for your timers to completely dissolve, and you can think about kind of how you're going to spend your money and what new things you're going to acquire, pick up, and deliver, essentially, um, while that time is running out. I believe throughout the game, you acquire more and more sand timers. Um, and so this one, when I first got it, I was like, I have no game like that. I don't have anything that's like a worker placement with sand timers and real time and plays in exactly 30 minutes I just thought that was sounded really really interesting and to to this day I think it does the problem is not a lot of other people think this sounds interesting uh, you bring a bunch of sand timers out and you have a lot of people running for the hills I think we've seen that with pendulum uh, stone Myers latest release there's people that love that game but there are a lot of people that are hating on that game and so a real real-time pickup and deliver game just hasn't necessarily inspired a lot of my friends to play um otherwise though that's pretty much it that's my entire shelf of shame right now that's those are the games i'm trying to work through um as you know i'm acquiring more and more games all the time through the spend my money mondays and the the trades i'm doing and um the different things i'm i'm looking out for on kickstarter and whatnot and so um Tell me below which one of these games I should play first, or if there's a game on this list that you've played that's absolutely terrible that I need to just get rid of, just cut my losses now, put it out on the trade market. Um, or even if if you have uh, some tips or tricks to getting these games to the table, that would be super helpful, um, and I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know down below. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your week.